is the story of how I lost my virginity at my college campus. And it was one of my professors that took my virginity. And this professor had a wife. Let's get right into it. So this happened my freshman year in college, okay? A bitch just got there. If I'm being 100% honest, I never wanted to do the nasty because I was trying to save it for somebody special. After I graduated, <laughs> baby, it was time for me to act up. And I most definitely acted up. <laughs> Shit. So freshman year of college comes around. The first day of school and I walk into English class. I see this fine, sexy, tall glass of water. I see this man sitting at this desk in front of the classroom. This man was Liam Hensworth on crack. This is Liam Hensworth, bitch, do the math. Class starts and he introduces himself as the professor. Like, really? I wanted this man to rail me. Anyways, as time went on, mm -hmm. the professor and I began to become really close. Maybe a little too close. He would ask me to stay after class and we would literally just talk. It became a regular thing. We got so close that we exchanged phone numbers. So close to the point where one night he called me and invited me to his house. So like I said, he calls me one night and invites me to his house. He said we were getting along really well and that he never did this to any of his other students, but since me and him created such a special bond that I was an exception. So I was like, so you're fine ass, sir, I will speed. Let me grab my keys. He gives me the address, I show up, and he lets me in. We sit down and we just start talking about anything. He shows me around his house eventually. As he's showing me around his house, we get to some pictures on the wall. That's when I found out that he had a wife. Immediately no, immediately no. Something else happened and I made an excuse to go home. He texts me and says that it sucks that I had to go home. He wishes we could have spent more time together. I told him that was most likely the last time we were going to spend together since he had a wife. Because I did give a fuck. At the moment. But things changed. Finding out he was married made me so uncomfortable that I stopped answering his calls and I stopped replying to his texts. I also skipped that class for a little bit because I just felt so awkward. The professor sends out an email saying that there was a mandatory meeting after school. I go to that meeting, but when I show up, me and my professor are the only people there. Like I said, me and my professor started taking pictures and taking videos whenever we would hook up. That would lead to our downfall. Mind you, he was the one who asked to start taking those pictures and recording those videos because he wanted it for when I wasn't around. We were doing all this and we were still walking by each other in class like nothing happened. Well, one day I'm sitting in his class as usual. Just a normal, regular day. I never would have thought anything like this would have happened. But I guess it's my karma. We're sitting in class and we're learning about whatever the hell we were going over some notes that a student had asked to go over because they didn't understand but the professor was having a hard time trying to pull up these notes his computer screen was connected to the big screen that all the students could see I don't know what it's called a smart board some electronic screen the projector i googled it <laughs> his computer screen is on the projector and he's opening up a bunch of documents and files and the next thing you know he clicks a file and all the pictures and videos of me and the professor naked together shows up on the screen in front of everyone like I said, the professor clicks on the wrong file on his computer. All the pictures and videos of me and him hooking up showed up on the screen in front of the whole entire class. I'm sitting there like, I don't know, I don't know who that is. That ain't me. It might look like me, but it ain't me. The entire class gasped all at once. It was like a harmony. And some students who sat next to me started to look at me. Like I said, I don't know who that girl that looks exactly like me on the screen is. I don't know who she is. Don't associate me with her. I don't know her. The professor's face goes red. He was frantically trying to take it off the screen like it's too late. I put my hoodie up and I didn't know if I should leave the classroom or just stay in the classroom because not everybody realized that it was me. Like some people in college don't pay attention to who's in their class. The people that sat next to me knew that it was me. I didn't know if I should have stayed in class or if I should have left the classroom because if I left the classroom it would have looked guilty but if I stayed in there it was just awkward. I decided to stay to avoid looking guilty. Once class was over and I went home, the entire school knew about me and the professor. And like I said, I sat through the rest of the class after those pictures and videos were shown. It just would have been way more awkward if I just walked out right away. Like it's already awkward. Let's try to avoid the awkwardness as much as we we can right now by the time i got home everybody knew about me and the professor everybody at school was talking about it what's worse is that somebody took a picture of the screen that was evidence and someone sent that to his wife a lot of people were asking me about what happened but i didn't tell them anything because i didn't have any friends at that school and nobody deserved to know my business i had not been in contact with the professor ever since he had blocked my number and i tried to email him but he wasn't answering my email he also stopped holding class the day after that happened one day he did email me back he said from there on out to stop contacting him and so I did. The school kind of swept everything under the rug. He did in fact get fired. The school said that if anybody reposted that picture of the screen, they would get expelled. I dropped out of college. It was definitely not worth it. So here's just a little reminder to never sleep with your college professor. Every time of why I'll never ride in a subway ever again. I was on my way home after spending the weekend with my friend. I sit on this bench waiting for my train. This bench was right in front of this wall. It was placed on the edge of the wall where you would like turn the corner. And on that wall behind me, there was a ledge. I had all my bags and I had my water bottle and I put it on that ledge. At the subway station, there was only like three people. Mind you, it was like nighttime. I noticed this creepy old man with a cane. Something in me was telling me to just Uber home. But I just stayed at the subway station because really nothing was going on for me to feel like that. If that makes sense. So I just ignored that feeling and waited for my train. 
thing. I turned around to get my water bottle so I could get a sip of it. I noticed this man sitting right on the corner of the wall and he was not there before so I was kind of creeped out. He just smiles and waves at me so I smile and wave back. I get my water bottle and I take a sip from it. Well the train finally arrives and I start to get my bags together so I can get on the train. By the time I got everything together it seemed like everybody else had already gotten the train except for the old man with the cane. Well, as I was about to get on the train he stopped me. He said not to get on the train because the man that appeared behind me had switched out my water bottle when I wasn't looking. It's a good thing I didn't get on the train. Or was it? Like I said the old man stopped me because he said the man that appeared behind me had switched out my water bottle when I wasn't looking and I had already taken a sip from it so good thing I didn't get on the train. So now me and that old man were the only ones in the station. I thank him and then I start to get tingles all over my body. Like I'm getting really sleepy. So I start to leave the subway to catch an Uber instead. My body keeps getting more and more tired. Next thing you know, I black out. When I woke up, I was back on the bench and the old man with the cane was sitting right next to me looking at me. I started to panic and he says everything is okay. Now when he started to leave the station behind me, he noticed that I was passed out so he picked me up and took all of my stuff and put me back on the bench. And he stayed with me to make sure that I was safe, not just passed out in the subway station by myself. So I'm thinking, wow, this old man is literally amazing. I think him and start grabbing my stuff so I can leave. Well, as I'm leaving, I get a really weird feeling. I decided to glance behind me one more time and there I see the man who supposedly switched out my water bottle turn the corner and start talking and laughing with the old man with the cane. So like I said, I see that same man who supposedly switched out my water bottle and put something in my drink that made me pass out in the corner and start talking to the old man with the cane who had told me that that same guy switched out my water bottle. My blood runs cold and I run. I run out of their sight as fast as possible. When I get out of the station, I run for blocks just in case they try to follow me. Once I get far enough, I hide behind a building and I order myself an Uber. I'm hiding behind a building because I'm super paranoid in case they're like in a car that drives by so like they don't see me. I wait for the Uber to arrive and I get in and I get home safe. My parents were expecting me to be home that night, so as you can imagine, they were super worried as to why I got home so late. I had just told them that I forgot something at my friend's house, so I had to turn around and go back, and that my phone had died, so I wasn't able to contact them. I didn't want to worry them, so I didn't tell them anything about the two men. Until I went upstairs to change. I took off my jacket, I noticed that the blouse that I had under it was unbuttoned. My bra was gone. And when I take off my pants, I see blood. That's when I run and tell my parents. So like I said, after that really weird encounter with those two men at the subway station, I get home safely and I start to undress. But when I take off my jacket, I noticed that the blouse that I was wearing under it was unbuttoned. My bra was gone. And when I took off my pants, there was blood. If you know what I mean. That's when I start crying and I run to tell my parents exactly what happened. I told them that I didn't tell them before because I didn't want to scare them. We were really understanding and the next day we went to the hospital. Well, once I got checked, they said they found wooden splinters inside of me. I must have not even felt that because of all the adrenaline that I had running through my body. And then I start to think, but why would there be wood? And then I remember that that old man's cane was wooden. After we left the hospital, my parents and I filed a police report. They opened an investigation and asked me to describe what the men looked like. They said they would check out the cameras at the subway station. But when they got there, they were told that that subway station didn't have cameras. And so they decided to take DNA samples from my clothing that I wore that night. And a match actually came back. So once they took DNA samples from my clothing from that night, I was at the subway station. They found a match and yup, it was that old man with the cane. But there was only one DNA match and it was just that old man with the cane. I was able to tell them like, yeah, that was that same guy with the wooden cane. Well, it turns out the old man with the cane was already in the system. He had gotten arrested before. He had attempted to murder and sexually assaulted his own niece. He had got let off on parole. There was so much evidence against him and also the fact that he tried something similar on his niece. They arrested him again. I also forgot to mention they took samples of his wooden cane, like the splinters that were found inside me. They matched it up to be like the same kind of wood. Anyway, so we go through the court proceedings and stuff and now he's locked up for like 20 years i'm pretty sure i never rode in that subway station ever again and i don't plan on riding in any subway station ever again and that other man that helped the old man with the cane is still somewhere out there because there wasn't enough evidence against him story time about how i found out my best friend's boyfriend was abusing her but not only was he abusing her he had lured her into a cult and was using her for sacrifice so me and my best friend were living together at the time she was sitting on the couch taking surveys to make money online she had made 3k in one day by doing these surveys link in my bio if you want to make bank so she told me about this guy that she had been seeing i was really happy for her because she had recently just gone through a bad breakup but the longer they were together she started to get really sick really fast she was a super healthy girl like she worked out she ate right so the fact that she rapidly started getting sick as soon as she she got a new boyfriend kind of worried me so i tried to talk to her about it but she got really mad at me i was trying to tell her to go to the hospital to at least get checked out but she kept refusing and as we were arguing she damn near passed out because how weak and sick she was i didn't see her for a couple days after that i thought that she had left the house after we argued well after those few days i started to notice a really really bad smell coming from her room so i go to check it out when i open the door i see her body just laying there laying there covered in satanic symbols with a circle with a star in the middle and there was blood coming out of her mouth 
So like I said, I walked into my best friend's room and her body was just laying there. She was covered in satanic symbols and had blood coming out of her mouth. I thought that she had left the house after we argued and went to stay with someone else. I didn't see her coming in and out of the house and she wasn't texting me. We did get into an argument and I thought she wasn't talking to me because she wanted to cool off. So I immediately called the police. I took her to the hospital and they also looked around her room and around the house. Well, when they looked around her room, they had found chewed up dead rats in her closet. They had found out that it was her eating those dead rats when she had went to the hospital and they found it in her system. She ended up being in a coma. The police seemed really suspicious of me and was asking me a lot of questions. It does make sense because I was the last person to be seen with her. Well, a few days later, I get a knock on my door. It's the police. They arrested me on suspicion of trying to kill my own best friend. But not because they were suspicious of me, but because my best friend's boyfriend had told the police that my best friend had told him she had overheard a conversation while I was on the phone about me trying to get rid of her for good. So the police had showed up at my house and had arrested me for suspicion of trying to murder my own best friend. Because my best friend's boyfriend had told them that I had a plan to get rid of her for good. So police took me into custody. Apparently my best friend's boyfriend had evidence against me. Which was a note that she had written saying that I I had a plan to get rid of her which she had given to her boyfriend who didn't know what to do with it until now she had signed that note they had checked the signature handwriting and the way that the letter was written with her parents just to make sure that it was really her and her parents said yes this is 100 her mind you i was completely innocent whatever she wrote in this letter was not true my best friend is not the type to make up lies like that especially about people who are really close to her that's when i knew that her boyfriend definitely did something well a miracle happened child a miracle happened my best friend woke up from her coma she said she was done being brainwashed